What is <clears throat> irrational is when somebody tries to think without one or more of the reality, the sensation of the reality, or the information. If somebody turns away from one or more of those three, they become irrational. Their judgment is irrational. So let me give you some examples. How about we try and think about something that has no reality? My imaginary friend is floating up there. Flub the ghost. Can anyone tell me what color his eyes are? Very good. You can't think about something that has no reality. It becomes irrational. Now let's try and think about something without sensation. Did I have breakfast this morning? What did I have? You all understand what breakfast means. You all know what having breakfast means. You all know what this morning is. But you have no sensation of whether I had breakfast this morning. You, whatever answer you give me is irrational. Now, let me try and explain to you what it means to think without information. Um, Professor Norman mentioned M-theory. Let's just quickly go into an example of M-theory. M-theory is the idea that there might be might be multiple infinite universes <clears throat> might be do we have any information about what these are no. could you tell me what's outside this universe can anyone tell me do you have any information about what's outside this universe if there's a god what does he look like if the god that exists maybe according to professor norman exists and created the very idea of creation does he need creation anyone got any information on that what about omnipotence? Can anyone explain omnipotence outside of this reality? No information becomes irrational. So, you need reality, you need sensation, you need information. That's what it means to be rational. Ignore those, you become irrational. We'll take Q&A, obviously. But now I want to use this to describe what I think is very obvious about the three statements. And I'm going to give you the three statements again. It is irrational to conclude the universe brought itself into existence. It is irrational to conclude the universe has always existed. And it is rational to conclude the universe was created by something different to it. And the reason why I've brought up these is because the first two statements are the pillars of the atheist argument. The pillars of the atheist argument, the universe has no needs. Doesn't need a God, doesn't need a cause, doesn't need creation, doesn't have needs. And because it doesn't have needs, it didn't need a God to create it. That's, that's the first pillar of the atheist argument. And the second pillar, when the first pillar starts to shake, is, well, the universe has always existed. And I'm going to say to you that those two are irrational. And if they're wrong, if those two statements are irrational, if the universe had a beginning and didn't bring itself into existence, then it was created. <laughs> That's the proof of creation, and creation equals a creator, which is statement three. So let's see whether these statements add up. Does the universe need something to bring itself into existence? That's the statement. Does the universe need something to bring itself into existence? Well, what's the definition of the universe? The universe is everything, the sum, the totality of everything inside it. All the atoms, all the things, all the matter and antimatter, all the laws, all the forces, together into one, or rotated around one, if you go back towards Latin, is the universe. So it's not just saying that the universe brought itself into existence, it's all the things in the universe have brought themselves into existence. And that isn't true. These things in the universe, which together make up the universe, have needs. And let me explain what I mean by needs. Something has a need if it has a weakness, if it has a limit, if it has a start, if it has an end, if it has a maximum amount, if it has an edge, if it's things, if it has things it cannot do, if it relies on things, depends on things, if it is contingent, if it is limited, needy and dependent. That's what I mean by needs. And something that has needs is what I want to discuss. If something has needs, it cannot come into existence before the thing it needs. So let me give you an example. Human beings, we need oxygen, right? 
Human beings need oxygen. Can human beings come into existence before oxygen exists? Can't. So, a human being, because it needs oxygen, cannot have brought itself into existence until oxygen exists. There's a need here. That's what I'm talking about. Now, sorry. Let me use the example of this bottle. Did this bottle bring itself into existence? Anyone? No, no. Now, there's many reasons why we could say it couldn't. But one of them is that it needs plastic to exist before it came into existence. Did plastic bring itself into existence? No, because it needs oil. Did oil bring itself into existence? No, because it's a fossil fuel and it needs the earth to squash the ancient plant life. Do you see there's a chain of dependencies? That means that the bottle didn't bring itself into existence, the plastic didn't bring itself into existence, the oil didn't bring itself into existence. You can keep taking this back further and further and further. What this means is this didn't bring itself into existence and the things in the universe didn't bring themselves into existence because they rely on something before them. At this point, the atheists say, okay, so what if the things in the universe all need something to come into existence? Maybe that chain of dependencies goes back forever without a beginning. Maybe there was no beginning. And so, we go on to statement two, because the atheists generally, they can't deny that <coughs> things need something to exist before they can come into existence. And then we ask, can the universe have always existed? Can the universe have always existed? Well, <coughs> the statement that the universe has always existed up until now, because always existed up until now, means for infinity up until now, for eternity, for an endless amount of time up until now. What that means is that we're at the end of infinity. That infinity is ended somehow because we're at the end of it. That's rational, isn't it? <laughs> we say, no, the universe can't always have existed up until now without beginning. It can't, because if you're saying it's existed forever till now, then infinity's ended. And we're at the end of infinity. Can you be at the end of infinity? No. no. Let's say that we are in the library looking for a book. So as library. But you know how it is, down to the last copy. <laughs> we're all competing for this copy. If there's five people ahead of you in the queue, you wait for five people. But then you get your book. How about a thousand people ahead of you in the queue? You wait a thousand people. How about an infinite number of people ahead of you in the queue? Endless, eternal. Will you ever get the book? You can't be at the end of infinity. It's not rational. So, it's not rational to say that this brought itself into existence. It's not rational to say the thing before it brought itself into existence. It's not rational to say anything in this universe brought itself into existence. It's not rational to say the universe itself brought itself into existence. It's not rational to say that the universe has always existed. It's not rational. So what are you left with? You're left with something that didn't bring itself into existence, that had a beginning. It's rational now to say something caused it, something created it. And that's where I go to statement three. And statement three is, this reality, this universe, was created by something different to it. Now let me explain. This universe has dimensions, space and time, up, down, left, right, good, bad, gravity, whatever you want to say. There are constraints, there are limitations within this reality. Whatever created this reality cannot be bound by the things it made. Does that make sense to you? Whatever created this reality cannot be bound by the limitations that it placed upon its creation. If it created time, then it was existent outside of time. If it created space, it was existent outside of space. If it created the idea of shape, then it existed outside of that. 
So whatever created this reality is different to it. <clears throat> if things in this reality are limited, then whatever is outside, whatever created is not limited, is unlimited. But I point this to you. Remember we said what is rational. What is rational <coughs> means that you think according to the reality, the sensation of the reality, the information you hold. So we're limited in what we can say about what's outside the universe. All we can do is think about what we can sense, what is inside this reality. And this points us towards a creator in the same way that a detective would see a dead body with a knife and think, well, maybe there was a murder. Do you understand? Rational. Five seconds left, so I'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Before I do a quick summary, is it possible for the people at the side of the um, seat to just move in a bit to give our um, guests that are coming in later a bit of space? No, it will wake you up from the lectures. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Um, Hassan Chaudhry's presentation, um, he outlined um, some realities. In the, he, divide, he divided his circle into two parts. The first was on what is rational, and the second part he focused on proving three statements. Uh, those three statements were that it is irrational to believe that the universe was brought into existence on its own, that it is irrational to believe that the universe goes on forever and that he mentioned that his last point that it is actually rational to believe in a God. The first part of his presentation he actually defined rationality as um, the reality being in contact with the senses, being linked to previous information and then the human being coming with a judgment. In regards to his three points that he mentioned, regarding his irrational to believe that the universe was brought into existence on its own he gave very various arguments to his presentation. The second point of that the universe lasts forever, he went into how the concept of infinity, how there's limitation <coughs> of this argument, and his final point he emphasized <coughs> was on that it's actually rational to believe in this chain of events that we are now currently part of. So now we come to the part of the discussion where both of our guest speakers will have a five minute rebuttal um, to come against what the other speaker has mentioned, um, like before, Richard, Professor Richard Norman um, will go first. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Can we agree to use first names, by the way? I'd like to refer to you as Hassan, if I may, but I hope you will do the same to me. Thank you. Um, I, I was very sympathetic to what Hassan said in the first part of his presentation about the concept of rationality. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily put it in exactly the same way. I think that's a notion of rationality that, that, that we can work with and which indeed I want to come back to at the end of my five minutes. Um, what I have more problems with, obviously, is then the second half of what he was saying and his three-step argument, if you, like, if you remember the way in which it went, that um, statement, statement one is irrational, statement two is irrational, so statement three must be rational. Now, what were the two, the, the first two statements in? I wouldn't want to put them in exactly the same terms, but to agree with something very close to what he was saying. Here's how I would want to put it, and it's in a, in a slightly different order again. The idea that the universe always has existed is one that we seem to find incomprehensible, for just the sorts of reasons that he indicated. We simply can't grasp the notion of being at the end of an infinite sequence. A telling point. Um, the, the, the other claim that it's, well, let me, again, let me slightly rephrase it, but it seems also incomprehensible to suppose that this universe <coughs> might have had a beginning in time, that um, uh, it didn't exist and then suddenly came into being. 
out of nothing. That seems equally incomprehensible. 